Hi, everyone. Welcome to People Metrics Live. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, uh, we here at People Metrics are focused on helping companies improve the customer experience that you provide. And People Metrics Live is our live webinar where from our team share best practices in customer, employee, and patient experience measurement and management. Uh, so the topic for today that we'll be going over is how you can optimize your survey uh, with SMS and video feedback. Uh, but before we dive in, let's do some quick introductions. Uh, my name is Kirk. I've been an account manager here at People Metrics for a number of years, run a number of customer feedback programs, and I'm here to share my expertise. And I'm joined by our panelists, Sean McDade and Audrey Swierski. So Sean, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to say hello. Hey everybody, Sean McDade, founder and CEO of People Metrics. It's great to be here. And hi there, I'm Audrey Squarski. I'm the Director of Customer Experience here at People Metrics, and I'm also excited to be here. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this week's People Metrics Live on how to optimize your survey with SMS and video feedback. Uh, so, uh, Sean, I think the, these are, are somewhat new items in, in the survey space. So can you just mm -hmm. kick us off and you know, give us your thoughts on, uh, yeah. on the state of this feedback and, and what folks should know? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a few things. One, you know, email surveys are still the norm, right? Sending out surveys via an email invitation, a unique link. But, you know, I, what I'd like to think the audience to think about is, you know, in your general life now, how much... Email are you responding to? Probably still quite a bit. Um, how many texts are you getting? Probably a lot. And in terms of video, are you using it more or less than you did say five years ago? And my guess is you're, you're using it more. So that's also kind of consistent with what your customers are probably looking for and, um, and doing. So, you know, we still believe in email surveys. We think it's a great way to get feedback, um, but these other ways, uh, these other methods, especially SMS and video, I mean, it's it's kind of what's happening in 2021. Um, the SMS is really a, I think, a better way to get responses higher um, than email if you can manage it. Although there are some complications in it, video is kind of an add-on to either, right? So it's not like you're substituting a video for either of those video is a way to gather feedback sms and email are kind of uh launch mechanisms to get somebody into the survey and then video is another option to collect feedback along with you know scaled questions and open ends and things like that um audrey what do you think about all this yeah so i like to think of these two options as really enhancements to your program um i don't yeah. think that you should forget about email or, or really change what you're doing with email but i think of these as add-ons so for your customers where you do have a, a mobile number for them um communicating via text is a great thing to do um and we've seen that it, it can really increase response rates and we'll jump into that a little bit more and i think the video feedback option should be used strategically i mean sean you mentioned that mm -hmm. video is is all over the place on all these different platforms now people are creating videos and consuming videos and it mm -hmm. makes sense to add it into part of your customer experience program um and I, again i like to think of it as an enhancement you don't have to do all or nothing you can add it uh you know after uh, an outcome metric to gather more feedback or just put it at the end of a survey for people to, to leave more information via video. And we'll talk about some more options when we jump into that section. Yeah, and, and maybe we can start with just you know, providing a definition at first as to, to what we're talking about. So I'll go ahead and, and share my screen and we can just clarify what we mean by, by SMS and video feedback. I'll take the SMS, Audrey, why don't you take the video uh, uh, to your customer, and it's looking like this. So it's a link that's embedded into a text. You can see it on, on the left-hand side, SMS feedback, and your customer would, link, would click on that link, and they would go to an HTML-based survey somewhere that you're hosting, right? So what we're not talking about today are back-and-forth text surveys. So you may have gotten one of those people in the audience who are listening here where you, you know, you get a text and it says, you know, how would you rate our service on a scale of one to 10? And you would have to literally text back, text back 10. And then they might ask you another question. Um, 
you know, that's a very, very kind of narrow use case. Um, we think that this works better for most people simply because you're giving your customer the ability to respond on their own time. You can get more detailed feedback through the link that you'd be able to ask open ends and video. Um, so again, you need your, your customer's mobile number, obviously. Audrey, how about, um, how about the, uh, the video? You, you've been involved in this lately. I have, yeah. We, we, we've been doing this with um, some clients and, and we're getting really good results. And so what we're talking about when we say video feedback is adding a video feedback component to one of your existing surveys. Uh, and you can do that by asking uh, respondents right in your survey, are you willing to provide more feedback via video? If they say yes, they can open their webcam right on their phone or their um you know, any device that they're on and answer whatever question you want. And we've been getting um, a lot of good feedback. And while the response rate for video is not super high, the value you get from each video is, um, and there's only so much video you could really watch. So we've been getting sort of a small pool of respondents who are recording videos for us, but they've each been really valuable. Um, and I think there's some interesting ways to incorporate video feedback. And then we can talk about what you do with it after you receive it too. Yeah, and I can briefly just, just show a clip of how that would look uh, to a respondent giving that feedback. My opinion of Primark is that it's absolutely fantastic. My only dislike is that their stores are Okay. I like that. Ooh, is that uh is, is the audio coming through on that? Mark, uh, I think that their basic things like t-shirts are actually better quality than MS's and the price is way different. Primark are very reasonable. I'd pay more actually for their jeans and basic t-shirts given the quality and how well they last compared to MS. Primark are really cheap and I like that they have a range of clothes to meet everybody's needs, whether you're a child. You allowed you a man, you older person, and the value is really good. I like Primark brand. I think that we're looking to. Right. I think we. I think we get the idea. So these are customers who are answering a specific question being offered to to them, just like you would on any kind of open ended question on a survey. And instead of them typing in the responses, they're recording a short video in order to show to to you know tell that tell you about their experience um you know we all know that open-ended questions elicit stories and emotion that a quantitative say rating question can't um, and video even brings that to the next level so you know if you're able to to identify several customer clips that you think represent what they're going through today it's a super way to for storytelling and get and 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 socializing what's going on with the customer experience throughout your organization, and it'll be extremely powerful, much more so than than say a bar chart or even a quote from a customer. Um, these these really hit home. Well, with that, we do have a deep dive into kind of the benefits consideration. So. Uh, I think we do want to start off first with learning more about this SMS feedback. So let's let's yep. jump right to it. Let's do it. You save money. All right. So Audrey, we can go back and forth on this one, but um, you know, one thing's for sure. If you think about your own behavior, and I mentioned this before, you're much more likely to look at a text that comes in than, than one of the 100 emails you probably got this last hour, right? So texting can boost response rates because you're in front of the customer in a way that maybe you aren't as competitively before, right? So that's that's one way that and that that that's a benefit of it. And also people are just used to <clears throat> now responding to texts. Um, so it's, it's, you know, I think super helpful. How else would you uh, describe this, Audrey? Yeah, I think part of the positive of text is you get that immediate notification in your pocket or in your hand, wherever your mm -hmm. phone is. So, you know, you don't have to take the survey, right? Just because you received the text right then, but you at least 
have it in your mind, oh, I received this and maybe I'll click on it. Um, whereas with email, you're probably not seeing it until later. Uh, so it does really have the possibility and potential for boosting response rate. Uh, and that's what we, we've seen happen uh, in our use of it so far. So we're certainly recommending it. Um, and it's just another avenue to reach customers. So you can continue with your email survey for yeah. people where you have their email address and maybe not their mobile phone number. But for customers of yours that you do have mobile numbers, adding text on as a as a way to reach them is a big positive. Audrey, if if a, if a client or a company has both, what are you what are you what are you thinking of these days? So right now we're recommending that. Okay. I think you're uh, you're breaking up pretty good. Um, so how about uh, I'll try to answer my own question. So if you have a choice between the two, you know the the SMS, and as long as you have permission and opting in is the key consideration, right? That we have right below. You have to have permission to send this text to your customer, right? You can't, and it's the same with the email. You need permission to send the email to the customer, but you probably already have that from a while ago when opt-in email was, was becoming standard. Um, now you need to be able to collect that number as well as opt in, if you have a choice, I would always send the text with the same link that they're going to get in the email invitation. Um, and you know, tracking the email and text survey in, invites, you need you need to, you know, you need to track those two. Audrey, let's see if you can come back and talk a little bit about that, about how you do that. Certainly, yeah. So hopefully you can hear me now. Um, and we recommend and you know work with your survey provider. We're pretty well versed in this now. Um, so we will track the method uh, that we send each invitation so that we can um, manage response rate. We can see is our response rate higher for our text respondents, for people who are receiving their invites via text versus email? Um, are people more likely to answer when we uh, emailed them in the past and texted them now? Are we getting responses where we hadn't before? Um, so definitely important to make sure you get those metrics set up and you're kind of tracking them, as, especially if you're at the beginning of adding um, text message invitations into your program. Um, and then something else to consider is a whole host of options uh, that go along with texting. So, you know, we recommend at least getting a toll free number, but based on the volume of invites that you're sending, you might want to use a short code, um, which you probably need for two factor authentication. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll take over from here, right? So, a short code is, you know, it's a very, it's a small tech number of, of, of letters or numbers that represent the longer URL that that we saw in our in our example. So it's just a more elegant way to send the text invite, and it can be branded. It can be a vanity code. There's there's different ways to do that. That can be expensive. There definitely is a cost to all these options, um, and there's a cost in general depending on how many of these you're sending and getting back. Um, you know, SMS is going to cost a little more than email um, for a variety of these reasons. And, um, but you know, the, the response rate's worth it. So on a, on a complete cost per complete basis, you may be ahead here versus on email that you're gonna, you know, have to send a lot more responses out to get, the, or invitations out to get the same number of responses back. Um, Kirk, anything you'd wanna add on, on any of this? Yeah, I, I think the benefit is pretty straightforward. No. All right. Um, okay. I'll take people metrics live this week. If you could put, go on mute. Okay. Let's get to. I think the bottom line is if you can, if you have opt in customers, e mobile numbers, you should definitely be using SMS. Um, if you want it to be more branded, it's going to cost, it's going to, if you want the branded part with the short code or vanity code, it's going to cost a little more, but you don't have to have that. Um, if you're just looking to pilot this, this is a minimal expense um, with a longer URL. And like Audrey said, you can just take a look and see how many more responses you get via the text versus your traditional email invitations and see if it's worth the effort of you know, getting more opt-in mobile numbers from customers. But I can tell you this, customers want to interact with you via text. That's the data that we're seeing. They like it. Um, and it, it creates, I think, a different relationship between you and the customer. It's more of a personal one where, you know, texting tends to be more personal than email. Um, 
these days. So that's that's the high level on SMS feedback. Uh, so we can get to video next, which is very fun. Right, so the key benefit to me of video is it's the storytelling piece. Um, you, you, you can tell stories with customer videos in ways that you just simply cannot today. You know, bottom line, like even the greatest open-ended text or, or, or typed in comment doesn't, doesn't compare to having that same customer tell that story and you can look at their facial expressions and you can look at their, you know, their emo you can feel the, their emotions, both positive and negative, right? Um, and it's just a tremendous way to socialize customer experience across your organization, especially to executives. I mean, we've, I've presented to executives my whole life, C-suite people, and I always use stories in it because they, they tend to really relate to a story. And, and stories to me were more around um, text. See if maybe I'm now right, getting well, it. Let me jump in and see, see if I can take it. Um, we talk about moments of truth often here at People Metrics, which are, are moments that your customers experience in their interaction with your company that elicit an emotional response. And having the option of letting them talk about it via video helps you really understand what that emotional response was. Was it positive? Was it negative? Did um, something heartwarming happen? Uh, you know, like Sean mentioned, reading about things is great and we highly recommend collecting those comments um, that people type in, but having someone on your screen and a video of them explaining to you uh, what went wrong or talking about a specific employee who really um, enhanced their experience and, and made them want to return or recommend your company or any um, of a variety of things that they may talk about uh, is really powerful. And we've seen uh, a lot of positives about sharing these videos within the organization, certainly um, for employee recognition when their name is mentioned about something they did that went above and beyond. Um, but also it's a good coaching opportunity if you have one of your customers on video talking about something that went wrong. Um, it seems very impactful to share that with your employees and I think it helps them really understand how their actions impact your customers. Um, there are a lot of things to consider though, just like with SMS. Um, you want to make sure you're asking questions that give you distinct answers from what you're already asking. You don't want to ask something and have someone type up a whole response and then say, okay, tell me about that in video. So you want to make sure you're saving your questions that you want a video response for specifically to the video prompt. Um, you don't so, wanna, go ahead. So Audrey, really what video is, it's it's a more, it's a richer way to get open-ended feedback, correct? Like, is that the way that you think of it? That's at least what, it, what I think of. Totally, right. yes. Um, and and you, don't, you don't wanna disrupt your existing survey flow by putting a video in a place that doesn't make sense. Um, so maybe you wanna add it on at the end as a pilot and see what kind of feedback you get with a question that you weren't asking before. Or maybe you want to replace one of your existing open-ended questions with the opportunity for your respondents to provide video, video feedback. Uh, and remember, people are able to decline. They can say, you know what, no, I'm not interested in providing that video feedback today, and they can skip over it. Um, so people aren't forced to leave the video feedback, but at least giving them the opportunity is going to get you that rich feedback um, that speaks to the emotional impact of their experience. You know, Audrey, there's like two main use cases I see from this that make a lot of sense. One is, at, like you said, at the end of a survey, right? So you've already asked maybe about net promoter score. You've asked about how satisfied they are with the most recent experience. You may have asked about, did they have any problems? And then at the end, you're basically saying, hey, is there is there anything else that you would like to tell us that was really important about your most recent experience? Or would you like to elaborate on anything that you that you indicated in this survey that's really important about your to your most recent experience. And that makes a lot of sense to me because at the like if you're a customer filling these out, um, I think it needs to be at the end of the survey because asking them to make a video and then pop back in to answer more questions is probably and going to have a lot of, you're gonna have a lot of drop off there. And it's gonna be confusing we think to the customer. Um, the other use case is if you have a super short survey, it's all the rage these days to have, you know, two, three question surveys. So maybe you have a three question survey that's like net promoter score, what, how satisfied were you with the most recent experience? 
And then you say, tell us a bit, you know, could you record a video to tell us more about why you answered this way, right? Or you could ask a video that says right after, if you, maybe it's only two questions. Maybe it's net promoter score and you say, Audrey, you can say something like, tell us how we could uh, move you one point higher in your net promoter score. What could we do specifically to help to, to make your net promoter score higher or move you one point higher? And then specifically ask them to, to record a video around that. Like, so it's, it's very specific, but for the respondent, after they record the video, they're basically done the survey. I would not ask them for more after that. I don't know what you think of that, Audrey, but that's yeah, my I opinion think that's on great. it. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity to use video in those shorter surveys. Um, and you can always pull out a certain population if you wanna ask people from a specific location, a, a, a very specific question about that location that you think would be helpful to have on video. You could go out to just that population with a video survey or, or one of those yeah. two question surveys. But Sean, like you said, asking people what you can do to improve, think about how valuable that would be to have your customers on video, what you could do. Yeah, it just, it, it opens up just lots of possibilities for, again, like part of, I assume people who are watching this are either responsible for a customer experience program at a company, or they're, you know, responsible for somehow delivering an experience to a customer. And, you know, half the battle sometimes in organizations is reminding everyone on how important the customer is. And without the customer, there is no business. And these videos really kind of hit home, not only that the customer is important, but some customers have great experiences and here's, here's why they're great. And some customers don't. And here's why they're poor. And you know, if you get your entire organization listening to the customer, focused on the customer, acting on their feedback, and really feeling what the customer feels, then you have a customer-centric culture that's highly differentiated from most competitors that you have, is my guess. And, you know, there's nothing like that. Definitely. And I think um, something else to think about and consider when you're adding video is how you're going to share it within your organization. Um, we talk a lot about this with your regular feedback program anyway. What are you going to do with the data after you have it? So you should already have a good system in place for sharing um, data at a regular cadence and closing the loop with customers. Um, but I think that video should be used to enhance the story you're already telling. Um, to say, you know, we saw our MPS go up and here's what our promoters are saying via video, or we're having issues with um, the wait times at our locations. And here are some of our customers talking about wait times and what it means to them and how it impacts their experience. Audrey, we don't have a demo today, but maybe you can just talk for 30 seconds on, you know, we're not just recording videos and saying good luck to you, right? Like if you use people metrics, these are organized in a very systematic way on, on, on our software. Certainly, yeah. So um, each customer records their video and then you have the ability to view it along with some of their customer info about where they had their interaction or the rep that they talked to and some of the other scores that they gave on their survey. Um, the video tool automatically transcribes their video and then you have the ability to pull out pieces of videos and um, order them and create a show reel to really tell your story. So the tool is super intuitive, it's really fun to use and that's what People Metrics is here for, will help you make the most out of your, your video feedback uh, to share it with your organization to get the impact that you're looking for. Yeah, and the, and the highlight reel is a really powerful way to tell stories. Um, and that highlight reel can change over time as the experience has changed. So, you know, we don't see this as a one-off, just like you don't probably don't see measurement of the experience as a one-off. It's something that evolves over time. And as new challenges and new opportunities are faced, your customers face, these videos are a way to really take a snapshot and then socialize within the organization. Um, and, you know, we think that, that it's a really important future for feedback, customer experience feedback. 
And I'll tell you, most of our clients are considering this right now. Like a lot of our clients really like this idea and they're super excited and it can, it can really apply right to any business. So if it's a, a lot of customer, let's say you're a B to B to C with a lot of customers, you know, you can take just a few of them and represent a lot of them. Or if you have a B2B business with just a handful of customers, this may even become more impactful because that one customer does represent so much of your business. I would definitely say that it's industry agnostic, that there's opportunity to incorporate video into your feedback program across any industry. It could be in a relationship survey or a transactional survey. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. So, boy. Transactional surveys or relationship surveys. This should always be part of a relationship survey, I would think. You're already asking a lot of your customer. Remember, relationship surveys are something to measure the relationship. It's typically a net promoter score outcome measure. And you're you're going into detail around their experience. So you're hitting probably all the touch points they could possibly have, maybe even asking competitor questions. And at the end of that, that those surveys can be 10 minutes long, 15 minutes long. They may be getting some sort of incentive to fill it out then you know, asking about a video to sum up their experience is an absolute best practice that I would recommend almost every time. Transactional surveys, you're gonna to have to make the call. If they're super short with NPS in one question, definitely. And you just have to weigh how much you wanna put that more onto the customer based on a short interaction that they may have had with you via the transaction. But like Audrey said, you can, you can, make, you, you can offer this to every nth customer. You don't have to offer it to all of them. You can you can you can turn this on for a certain amount of time. Get it, get some videos and do a highlight reel and stop. It's very flexible in the way that you can use it. But I think not having video these days is probably not an option. Um, if you're not doing it yet, you probably will. And it's just something to think about on what's the best fit for your organization and your customers. Um, I saw we had a question here about receiving permission to share videos, and that's a great question. Um, when we ask people to record their video, we they are implying um, that they are okay with you sharing it within your organization. Um, and then it says that it won't be shared outside the organization without explicit permission. So if you wanted to use some videos in, in marketing materials or something that was gonna be public facing, then you would need to get permission. But by recording the video, the respondent is saying you're able to share your video internally uh, with others at your organization. That was a great question. I mean, and you know, the world is your oyster with creativity on this. I mean. You could imagine having a reel being being played, say, in a lunchroom where your employees are, or you an all hands meeting. You could st always start with a customer video, end with a customer video. Um, you know, once we're all back in the office, if you have TVs, you could have TVs dedicated within the office structure of you know customer videos. You know, you could have it on as as people are walking into your your reception area. I know this all sounds strange because we have a lot of us haven't been at the office for a while, but we will be back. I mean, at some point. So it's it's really unlimited what you can do with that. So I think we talk about um, companies being customer inspired or putting the customer first. And I, I think the way I'll close this out is what better way to do that than by sharing a video of your customers talking about their experience. If you ever want to see a demo of how this works it, in real life, you know, happy to to do that, or if you have any questions on this at all, just shoot us a note. Well, then thank you all for uh, sharing your expertise and looking forward to the next session. Thanks everybody and have a great day.